First up, fresh minestrone soup. This should be a star hit on any Italian menu. Oh, my God. Very, very greasy. Yeah. Dirty all slick around the outside. I'll pass on that one. What is that? Oh, it's parsley on the stalk. Next, salsiccia Lugano. Fresh Italian sausages baked in white wine and served on garlic bread. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear. And um, it looks like two poodle penises doused in parsley. I almost like feel I've gone back to sort of 1982, where every other restaurant in the high street was an Italian ripoff. We're now in the 21st century and they're still serving crap like this. Fucking disgusting. Ugh. Even worse, the amaretto cake is bought in. Um, unfortunately, not quite defrosted, slightly frozen in the centre. Oh, dear, dear. This is about as authentic as a fucking Chinese takeaway. Right, mm. Alessandro. You talk passionately about, you know, Italian ingredients, authenticity. I saw nothing Italian and nothing done with care. I'm concerned about where you're going, how long this place has got to last, and unfortunately delivered fuck all. And that was way, way, way below par. Do you think this is funny? No. No? No, oh, because I didn't find it funny. That was upsetting. Because that was fucking dire. Alex may think that I'm his worst nightmare, but this really is my idea of kitchen hell. He's in such meltdown. He's even let the most basic standards of hygiene slip. you think you'd have cleaned up. I mean, it's not as if he didn't know I was coming. There's no excuse for filth as bad as this. When was the last time the place was really properly cleaned? It's cleaned every Friday afternoon. Yeah? Bullshit. When was the last time all the fridges were pulled out? Pulled out? Yeah. Um, that was done about two weeks ago. What about all the bread rolls down behind the fridge now? You can see them from here, look. That's how Donna disgusting. she throws Al bread Donna. up into the uh, cream. Uh, Aldona throws bread up into the basket. To dry out. To dry out for breadcrumbs. And she misses, so it all goes down the back of the fridge. Dirty lady. What about this pile of shit here? What about them? With the kitchen in this state, Alex risks food. further damage to Lanterna's already fragile yeah. reputation. Oh, fuck it now. It's never been used. What about these trays here? When were they done last? It could even be closed down. That, if we do that, the, oven, stops, ago? the oven doesn't stop working when we change oh, it. Oh, fuck it now. Are you ever going to tell me the truth? It does. Don't worry about the oven breaking, <laughs> yeah? That's replaceable. Giving a customer fucking food poisoning is not. Yeah? Yeah. Look, look at that in there. That is gross. That is fucking disgusting. Everywhere you turn in this kitchen, there's another surprise. Look. Mussels on the floor. Stuff everywhere. Produce just left going mouldy again. And then there's a pot noodle on there. Who the fuck is eating pot noodles? Oh, almighty. There's 60 customs out there. I am so fucking glad they can't see where their food's coming from, how it's cooked, and what the fuck is going on behind the scenes, because it's a mess, and it's a fucking embarrassment. Fucking disgusting. Oh, my God. That is taking the fucking piss. Fucking hell. What is that? This is salsa sauce. Holy fuck. Everything from all-day English breakfast, hoisin noodles to Mexican platters. This is definitely more confusion than fusion. Some of it's even served in a bread bin. People don't eat out that, surely. Are you taking the piss? Well, we, we give it a bit of a polish. 70% of Philip's food is brought in, ready prepared. And what's happened to that? The Frenchman even gets his baguettes delivered frozen. Fucking hell. And buying in ready-made food is an expensive false economy. What's the most popular dish today? Uh, the hamburgers and the crabs. Are they homemade, then? Yeah, yes, they are. Oh, oh, it. oh, finally. Thank you very much. Oh, just fucking rang it. Philippe's two sous chefs, Munya and Alcima, are young and inexperienced. They clearly know nothing beyond Phil's warped culinary world. And what's that in there? It's on the sauce. Uncle? Uncle, Uncle ben. ben. When do you want to be a head chef? Three years. Fuck me, you better move your ass. 
Ready? Munya, where do you want to be a head chef? Well, maybe in about 10 years' time. 10 years' time, yeah. Probably have my own place, I think. That's what I would like. <laughs> they may be hungry for success, but if they think this is cooking, they're in for a surprise. Pretty lumpy, that, isn't it, no? It looks like fucking porridge. The bells. The bells. Can you tell me if this is starter and this main course, or is it all together? Yeah, please, because I can't guess. You didn't take an iswas. The one oh, which was here was the Greek now. salad. Lunchtime service should be a quick turnaround, but with all the cock-ups, the customers are lucky to get their food within 45 minutes. And it's not helped by the full-scale war ranging between restaurant manager Dave and Philip. What is it between you and Dave? Because you hate each other, right? Uh, pretty much, yeah. yeah. And when the food does eventually make it out to the customers, it comes boomeranging back just as fast. What's up? Which one? It's my mistake, obviously. Uh, I should have spotted it before it went out. And it's not just the undercooked fish that slips through Philippe's net. What happened? She just said it was yeah. running. Which? What's going on here? The plates are fuller coming back than they are going out. She, he said it's not cooked properly. It's not what? No, it's not cooked properly. It tastes shit. Stodgy and fucking right. disgusting. How many's cooked there? Burgers can be barbecued, grilled or fried, but the secret to success is to cook them to order. Look how thin they are. We don't cook burgers now. They're not even on order. Uh, we're pre-cooking them either for tonight or even for tomorrow. Because the thing is... It's for like, tomorrow? The thing is, the oven is very, very slow and we can't put it any higher than that. Have you lost the plot? No. Have you gone a little bit fucking bonjour? No. And so how are you going to cook that again tomorrow? Uh, it will be reheated in the microwave. Holy mackerel. And the torturous treatment of innocent food doesn't stop there. And you deep fry the bacon now? We do, yeah. Would you cook like this in France? Well, uh, you'd be fucking no. shot in France, yeah. eh? They'd hang you upside down from the Arc de Triomphe by your bollocks, you know that? We're in the ship. Well, if we want to turn the business around, yes, uh, I, uh, I have to agree. We are in the fucking shit. Good evening. Have you had a chance to look at yes. the menu? Yeah. yeah. Downstairs, Sharita slipped effortlessly into the role of the hostess with the mostest. Any of you eat macaroni and cheese? We do. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. Gordon grated my cheese. <laughs> Brian's taking his first decision as the head chef. Pre-cooked buffalo wings are off the menu. From now on, they're being cooked to order. Yep. Chicken's been cooked from fresh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. People already in place stand around in 20 minutes. Well, almost. The rest of the food's going out just as Sharita's always done it. Hot food, cold plates, uninspiring salads. Like four pounds for that. That's shocking. And jaw-breaking meatloaf. What time are we close to that? <laughs> you laughing? Um, but let's not try to run before we can walk. Can I get this one as soon as possible? Yeah, going. Going. Yeah. 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 How long? Um, Three minutes. Three okay. minutes. There we are. I'll take that. Thank you, Sharita. Bye. Okay. See ya. All right. There you go. Up. The restaurant's full. But now she's front of house. Sharita's using every trick in the book to boost business. Five minutes. So you can go right next door to my friendly pub. Okay. There you go. And I will uh, see you in five. See you in five. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Brian, move up. Two hours in, and the food's not going out quick enough. Sharita's faith in Brian is dwindling fast. These guys have been in a long time. I got kids down there. Yeah, but their status have just gone. They've got status. Okay. What happened now with those starters? With those starters? They're done. So we're already in the lift? Yeah. Yeah. They are, Eddie, aren't they? What? These starters. What one? For this table. These ones? No, I'm doing them now. Oh, shit. I just thought that they're gone, man. For Brian, yeah. three years of living in a culinary coma is a hard habit to break. He's beginning to lose it. They're still waiting on their starters. This one. 
and Sharita's constant interruptions aren't exactly helping. Come on, Brian. Don't lose it now, yeah? No. What else on this table? I need to see. What's on it? You got, you got hot, hot, hot wings yeah. and barbecue chicken wings. I've got the hot wings. I need whatever else is there. Because they are getting restless. Oh, dear. I am so sorry. I'll tell you what the problem was. With fresh food, yeah, you can't expect the food to just jump on your plate just no, like that. We you can explain that to her after. Yeah. No? Chicken takes a good 14, 20 minutes to make sure that you know you don't kill anyone. Okay, has that pig feet go on? Because it needs to go on now, because it takes the time, yeah? Mm -hmm. Every minute you're in here, we're losing money. <laughs> Fucking hell. So, what do you think of that meatloaf? That'd be good. Thank you. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? I thought the kitchen got off to a really good start. You were slightly nervous being mm, down there because yeah. you were sort of not spying on them, but coming up, yeah. agitated. Yeah. Yeah. You lost it, Brian. A little bit, yes. A little bit. And things just got a little bit on yeah. time. You said something interesting, though. Yeah. Yeah. Trude has to understand it's going to take three or four minutes longer because I'm cooking from raw. Yeah. Mm. And the benefit is the customer. But I think this guy, yeah. with the help of Aidy, mm. can get faster. Yeah. Much, much faster. I mean, how would you yeah. sum up? You're in the dining room yeah, tonight. Yeah, it felt good, because I'm telling you, uh -huh. for three and a half years being here, it was the first Saturday night uh -huh. that I have spent downstairs. downstairs. Right. They've seen you, you know. That's the face they want to see yeah. when they come to see Mama. Downstairs, I'm going to be cracking the whip a lot harder. Yeah. It's your business. Yeah. So, of course. You know, and that's what I was whip. thinking, yeah. you know. <laughs> i got to crack it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. OK. Thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you, guys. Let me go down here Fire and finish off. seeing, because i got a few more desserts to sell. This is your canapé. You have an olive medallion and a cheese beignet. Canapés and a pre-starter. This is ambitious food for London, mm. let alone in Venice. Potato soup with um, wasabi. Mm, very creamy. Very, very rich. I, I, I'm excited about the food, but I don't feel comfortable sat here. Thank you. You're like a painter. You need, you need, a, you need a good eye. You know, like the painter will put something like black here and not here, because for him it doesn't look right. Okay, okay. Let's go. One scallops. Table nine. Very complicated. A lot of, mm, a lot of um, combinations of flavours going on. For me, the golden rule is always keep it simple. You're tasting a broad bean, a white asparagus, and a citrus vinaigrette, a confit tomato, fennel seeds, fennel flowers, chervil, salad, parmesan. There must be 20 things going on this plate. And then, you know, that looks fantastic. But... Didn't do anything, really. Next up, duck on deux service. This is a duck leg. Decided to make it a ravioli on duck leg table nine. A good um, 10 to 12 flavors on the plate again. It's just confusion. And your mind is sort of working overtime to try and understand what's happening. OK, service please. A main course nine. served in two parts. That's Maybe. just pretentious. Almost like someone um, is uncontrollable and almost like a little bit carried away and I'm overexcited and nothing saying, just stop, come back. Oh la la. Is that all for me? Yes, it's all for me. Louis sorry. seems desperate so. to impress. Next, he'll be telling me how to eat it. If I may, to recommend you the order. You've got the tiramisu first, uh -huh. please. Then the floating island. Yep. Then you'll have the souffle. Mm -hmm. Then the sobe. Mm -hmm. Finally, the cornito with marmalade. Yeah. Well, out of bollocks. Next, I'm going to be told which direction to pee in because of the fucking salmon in the river. Technically, flavours were amazing. The scallops were delicious. Mm -hmm. The um, light vinaigrette. Yeah. And did it need the parmesan? Did it need the flowers? And do you need that many flavours to make it work? I won't change anything on the flavour. I think the way we work, the product um, bring to the guests the, the flavours yeah. that I want. Your personality has to be comfortable mm -hmm. on the plate. And I see a lot of uneasiness on the plate. I don't know if you're confident enough in what you're doing. And I've got to be very honest, because this is very crucial. But this, 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 this has to work. Mm -hmm. Barry, what do you think? When you think about it, it's probably right mm -hmm. that he has to just find his own style. Barry's acting more like a besotted sugar daddy than Lewick's boss. You take on somebody like that, and you're taking them on because of their capabilities and their ambition. And 
you know, the last thing I want to try and do is restrain that ambition and, and what he's doing. I'm not, you know, I'm not a chef and I couldn't do what he does. I'm not really in a position to criticise. One Sibas, one grill. But I am. This place isn't even breaking even. And yet Barry's forking out four and a half grand a week just on staff. Allez, service. It's no way to run a successful business. 